from the subject, what relation is Jesus to you? What relation? Or how is Jesus a relative of yours? What relation is Jesus to you? Uh, what relation is Jesus to you? Uh, beloved, thank you, ushers. Just because a person says that they are a Christian mm -hmm. or that they believe in God does not make it so. Hmm? Family relationships are important to God. But just because a person says that they are a Christian does not necessarily make them one. Uh, spiritual family relationships and devotions is a priority with God. Hmm? Spiritual family. Mm -hmm. Spiritual family. A family relationship is important to God. But a spiritual uh, family relationship and devotion is a priority with God. And so what God is saying is that I require a deeper relationship and a deeper bond than your biological family. Mm. Can I preach in here? Yeah. Hmm? Uh, 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 the family is ordained by God. Mm -hmm. But what God says is that I ordain the family, but I need to have a deeper relationship with the spiritual family. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, spiritual family relationship is a priority with God because of what Jesus came to do for all humanity. Huh? Uh, Jesus is often rejected by people who claim to be Christian. That's why you have folks hidden and missing in church. Huh? Uh, there are a whole lot of folk that uh, say that they're Christian and claim the name of it, but they, internally they reject God. And so as a result of that, uh, 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 he's rejected by people who claim to be Christian. And this rejection is not anything new, amen? As a matter of fact, uh, if you search the scripture, what you will find is that Jesus was rejected by his own kinfolks. Yeah. You don't hear me yet, do you? Uh, 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 in this, before this passage of scripture and in other passages of scripture, when Jesus got involved in the beginning of his personal ministry, his own family thought he was crazy. Uh -huh. huh? As a matter of fact, uh, uh, he, he would go out teaching and preaching and they would say, let's go get him. He's gone mad. Uh -huh. He was rejected by his own family. Uh, in this text here, uh, his, his earthly father, Joseph, was dead. Amen. And, 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 and so Jesus here, in the 12th chapter of Matthew, he was actively engaged and ministering uh, according to how, how God sent him to minister. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, his disciples had put some ears of corn off a corn stalk on the Sabbath day. Huh? And, and the Pharisees uh, got after Jesus and them because they said to Jesus and the disciples, it's unlawful for you to put corn, ears of corn on Sunday, on the yeah. Sabbath day. Yeah. Are you hearing me, please? Yeah. And so as a result of that, uh, Jesus didn't uh, stop and make a fuss. He just kept on ministering. Uh, he knew what he was doing. Amen. And so in the text here, Jesus was having a, a meeting. Y'all don't hear me yet, do you? Uh, Jesus was having a meeting with religious leaders, uh, and, and he was meeting, watch this, he was meeting about an evil generation. <laughs> that evil generation consisted of the religious leaders, and it consisted of people that did not believe in God. That's an evil generation. You got some evil generations out here today. They ain't dead. Amen. And so he was he was uh, meeting with some religious leaders about an evil generation, and that evil generation is just like this evil generation here. They require a sign in order to believe. And we got folks 
today. You can tell them about Jesus all day long. And when you get finished telling them about Jesus, they need a sign to believe. There are people sitting in churches today all over this United States, packed, got the church packed out. But in order for God to bless you, he needs to show you a sign. Who in the world are you that you need a sign? As a matter of fact, can I tell you, God is the one that's looking for a sign. The sign that he's looking for is, are you my own? Are you in the family? That's the sign he's looking for, because guess what? The way you're hitting and missing, you don't act like you're in the family. But we have the audacity to ask God for a sign, and then you got some folks bargaining with God. They go in and come, well, Lord, you know, if you do this, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray to you. Now, if you do this, I'll do that. Yeah. It's foolishness. Yeah. Requiring a sign. And if God does not show me a sign, I won't move. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. They require a sign. And so Jesus had to take them into uh, the book of Jonah uh -huh. to help them to understand uh, a sign. Amen. He used, uh, he, he used a parable of Jonah in the belly of the whale. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and so trying to get them to understand or trying to move them, if you will, from the law to grace. Or from the prophets to grace, if you will. And so uh, I want to give you John 3 16 and 2 Corinthians 5 21 and 1 Peter 2 and 24 and Hebrews 9 and 26 and, and John 1 and 26. Jesus calls those who require a sign to believe in him an evil generation. Don't leave it back there. Don't leave it in Matthew. We got some evil generations right now. Amen. And as a matter of fact, let me get off the page here for a moment. We have uh, generations now that are believing in everything but God. Okay. Now, you don't believe that, you pay attention. You, you just pay attention to where some folks go and what they're doing and what they're wearing. You will find that there are many people that are off on their own tangent somewhere. Amen? And so uh, the direct rejection of Jesus and his miracles and his salvation uh, is to speak, watch this, against the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's against the Holy Ghost. Anytime that a person hears the gospel, and anytime an invitation is extended to them uh, to own up or to yoke up with God, and they say, oh, no, no, come back later. I can't be bothered. Uh, God, I was almost convinced, but uh, I need you to do something yeah. to convince me. First of all, I need you to understand that you're, at, at that moment, that action is, is speaking against the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke 12 and 10 and uh, Acts 5, uh, 4 through 9 and Hebrews 10 and 29 and also Genesis 6 and 3. So it's nothing new. Amen. We're speaking against God. Uh, you, you, you invite <laughs> folks that you know the church. You're trying to lead them to Christ and they, they, get, they get right in the threshold. They get right there in the threshold and they got the back up. Huh? Oh, yeah. You're blaspheming, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so we must understand that 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, Ephesians 4 and 30, and Isaiah 63 and 10. Now, in the midst of his teaching and in the midst of um, uh, his meeting, uh, the mother of Jesus and his brothers and his sisters and some manuscripts and his cousins as well, uh, were outside and they had they desired to speak with Jesus. Mm -hmm. In other words, there was an interruption, if you please. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the real reason that they wanted to speak to him was so that they could lay hold on him and drag him out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave y'all alone. <laughs> do you have anybody that you know that will do everything in their power? To keep you from Jesus. Mm -hmm. They will break their neck to keep you from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might not think that that occurs in, 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 in 2021, but it does. Mm -hmm. And so the real reason uh, that they wanted to speak to him, they didn't want to speak to him because uh, he was Jesus or, or, or some miracle that he was going to perform. They wanted to speak to him because they thought he was insane and they thought his teaching and his preaching was crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You find it in Mark 3, uh, 21 through 22. Amen. And so there's a lesson in this purpose for all of us who consider ourselves Christian. Amen. We must keep the things of God our priority. Now, Jesus did not come 
uh, to serve at the beck and the call of his mother, mm -hmm. his brethren, mm -hmm. or his sister. Mm -hmm. He had a higher calling. Uh -huh. Are you with me, somebody? Hmm? And so uh, the lesson uh, for us today is we must keep the things of God as our priority. Amen. Uh, the earthly family of Jesus thought that their desire to speak with him was more important than the work of the kingdom. We get caught up in the same mess. We get caught up in the same mess. And so we must understand and have our priorities uh, right. Amen? And then the other thing here is um, the word of God tells us that we are to render the things of God to God uh, and render the things unto Caesar unto Caesar. Amen? And so that's how God expects us to function. Can I get a witness in here? Hmm? And, and so we must understand that there must be balance. Amen. Uh, we, we must be, what, what do you have and what are you putting before Jesus? Hmm? What's so important that is more important than Jesus? What's so important that is more important than your salvation? Hmm. I just need to understand that. I, I need, to, need you to think with me on that note. And so uh, the answer that Jesus gave was not an answer of disrespect. See, somebody can read that passage of scripture and say, oh man, Jesus talked bad about his mother. And his... No, he wasn't talking bad. He, if, if, if you're not spiritual, that's how, you will, that's how it will come across to you. It will come across to you as though he was disrespecting his mother and disrespecting his brethren and disrespecting his sisters by asking the question, who are my brothers and sisters? He wasn't disrespecting them. He was putting things in context. Amen. And so the issue here is that um, he gave to them was not a disrespect to his biological family. Amen. Uh, when he was asked, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Because he stretched out his hand. That's in the text. He stretched forth his hand to acknowledge them. Read the text. When he asked the question, he stretched out his hand to them. Which meant that he wasn't confused and he wasn't mixed up about what he was doing and that God's will was his priority. Amen? You'll find that in John uh, 19, 25 to 27. Now, um, in the realm of salvation, Jesus was making the point that whoever does the will of his Father in heaven, the same is his brother, sister, and mother. Talk to me, somebody. So my question goes back to uh, what is your relation to Jesus? Amen? Uh, 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 if you're not doing the will of his father, you may not be kin to him. Well, well. <laughs> That's for you to answer. Amen? And so you'll find that in Hebrews 2 and 11 and John uh, 15 and 14. Amen? Uh, uh, Jesus calls uh, saved people his brethren and his friend. Huh? Uh, There's a song I used to be, I used to be singing about Jesus is a friend of mine, but they never was able to back the song up to talk about how he got to be a friend. Yeah. It was just sound some nice little lofty song. Hmm? If he's, he's, he's your friend and he's your brother if you're doing the will of the Father. And if you're not, you're probably not getting to him. <laughs> it's natural, amen. It's natural. Well, let me go with membership. Membership in the physical family is defined by blood. Go slow, Pastor. Membership in the physical family is defined by blood. But membership in the spiritual kingdom family is determined by a relationship with God the Father through faith that is evident by obedience to the will of the Father. So we can take a blood test and, and we can come up with the fact that uh, it's 99.9% .9 you are the father. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but in the spiritual realm, amen, uh, membership is different, amen. Uh, it's not defined by blood, but it is defined or determined by your relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My relationship is what defines me as a son or a daughter or a mother or a brother of God. My relationship with him. Do you hear me, somebody? Right. Amen. And not only relationship, but am I doing the will of the Father? Well, if you ain't in the Word, you, you'll never know the will. You won't get to the will. 
huh? You would just be spinning your wheels. Uh -huh. Amen? And so it is natural to doubt who God is or who the Son of God is or who the Holy Ghost is. Um, but our response to that doubt is to check it out. Mm -hmm. It amazes me how many people can walk around um, doubting who God is, doubting who the Holy Spirit is, doubting who God the Father is, and, 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 and they do all that doubt and then sit down. If you doubt that much, it looks like it looks to, it looks like to me you ought to do some investigating. Anything that I doubt, anything that I'm doubtful about, anything that has not been proven to me, I want to look at it a little bit deeper. I want to make sure that I'm not making the wrong decision. And so if, 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 you, if you don't know who God is or don't know who the Son is or don't know who the Holy Ghost is, and if you have doubt, the next thing, the next order of business is to investigate. Check it out. Do you know with some of the noses folks in the world? <laughs> Listen, folks will stay up all night long before I get in your business. But they won't, they won't, they won't stay up not one hour over past sleeping time to get in the Word of God. They'll get up early to get in your business. Oh, come on, talk to me in here for a minute. Huh? And, 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 and so, why don't you if, you, if you're that interested in somebody else's business that, you, that you're going to use your valuable time uh, to come to a conclusion, why won't you come to a conclusion about God, the Holy Ghost, and, uh, and, and Jesus Christ? Well, why not? All right. Okay, I'm trying to help you. I'm going to get out of your way here in a minute. Amen. And so, uh, we, we need to check it out uh, by faith. Amen. And then we need to accept the answers that genuine faith will provide. You see, doubt does not necessarily provide an answer. All doubt does is lead you to something else. But faith will get you an answer. Amen. And so, we ought to exercise faith. Amen. And, and, and that will determine and that will tell us um, the characteristics of God. The characteristics of the Holy Spirit, the characteristics uh, of Jesus Christ the Son. That's what faith does. And if you're not careful, if you have more doubt than you have faith, then faith will kill, a uh, doubt rather will kill faith. Yeah. Hmm? That's the reason that the Bible tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. And then you can't know the will of God, you can't even please God without faith. Mm -hmm. hmm? Without faith, what? It is impossible to please God. For they that believe in God must come to him, and they must believe that he is God. See, you can't have a wishy-washy opinion of faith when it comes to God. Either he's God or he's not. Yeah. Real simple. Amen? And so our, bi our biological family ties are not enough to separate us from an evil generation. Did you hear me, somebody? My biological ties. My biological family ties, they are not enough to separate me uh, from an evil generation. Uh, listen, haven't you seen families all do the same thing? And then when the next generation are born, they do what? The same thing? Biologically, you can't be separated from an evil generation. Oh, let me talk about Pastor Harrison. They're all looking at me like I'm crazy. I, 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 I know a family right now. <clears throat> Mama was a criminal and did time in the penitentiary. Daddy was a criminal. Daddy died in the penitentiary. Had three sons. They all did time in the penitentiary. And one daughter... She did time in the penitentiary. And when God said, that's enough, all of them died without Jesus. That's an evil generation, saints. I'm going to grow up, and I'm going right into heaven. First day, you in one prison in one state, daddy in another prison in another state. That's, my beloved, an evil generation. Yeah. Amen? And so don't think that I'm just talking to you just to be talking this morning. I'm really trying to tell you your relationship with God is important. Amen? Your relationship with Jesus Christ is important. Our biological family relations is not enough to supersede or exclude uh, our relationship of faith in God. Sometimes you got to kick some folks to the curb in order to be saved. All right. <laughs> 
I'm going to get out of here with you now. Yeah, so, so sometimes you've got to make a decision. You've got to make it up in your mind that for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Talk to me, somebody here. I started to tell you what my mother used to say, but I'm going to leave that alone this morning. So the relationship uh, of the family of God is a relationship of faith. Watch this right here. This is, this is an indication as to what, whose family you're in or your relationship with, with Jesus Christ. Uh, our relationship or the relationship of the family of God is a relationship, number one, of faith. It is a relationship of works. It's a relationship of devotion. It's a relationship of worship. It's a relationship of service. It's a relationship of giving. And it's a relationship of praise to accomplish uh, that that will please and that that will do the will of God. That's the relationship. That's the characteristics of the relationship. Now, many today are not related or not a relative of Jesus today in spite of the overwhelming evidence. What evidence, Pastor? You said that we ought to check it out. What evidence? Well, here's the evidence. Uh, many are not are, are related to him in spite of the overwhelming evidence of his authoritative teaching. Uh, Jesus was asked uh, what is truth? <laughs> Jesus asked, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Uh, his authoritative teaching. Uh, what, what, else, what other kind of proof? Well, um, if the record is right, um, Jesus turned uh, water into wine at a wedding. That was his first miracle. Talk to me, somebody in here. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later on, if you search the scripture, uh, Jesus stopped by uh, a funeral procession. Amen. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a man, uh, a man had died, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, his mother uh, was left without help. Amen. Yeah. And so uh, Jesus stopped by, and all Jesus did was Jesus just touched the casket and kept on walking. All right. and, 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 and the dead man was raised to life. And then another thing, uh, uh, since you want some evidence, uh, Jesus was one that gave sight to the blind. What other evidence do you need? Yeah. Amen. And then another thing, uh, there were some lepers that came to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And Jesus cleansed the lepers. What other evidence do you need? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he had one of his friends. You see, because some folks said, well, I don't know nothing about them folks, Pastor. Uh, that's just what the Bible said. So let me get a little closer to you. Jesus had one of his best friends. Uh, yeah. He had a family where Jesus used to go by the house. I'm going to leave you alone here. And uh, the scripture said that when Jesus was out on his missionary journey, Every once in a while, when he got tired, he would go by Mary and Martha's house. You don't hear me at the yeah, yeah. And uh, when you look at the scripture, you will find that Martha was a good cook. Yeah. I'm going to leave you alone. And then Mary was the type of person that uh, Mary would just sit down at the feet of Jesus. Uh -huh. And then whatever Jesus had to say, Mary would just sit down and she would just suck it up. I'm trying to leave you alone. But then Jesus, had a, they had a brother. And him and Jesus, they were good friends together. I'm talking about Lazarus. And so I imagine in my sanctified mind that Jesus could go to Lazarus and they could talk about all of the latest things that were going on in the world. In other words, they had some man talk. I got to get out of here. But, but, but you know the story, don't you? Uh -huh. You know how one day Lazarus got sick. Uh -huh. And Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Uh -huh. And not only did he get sick, but they sent word to Jesus. Uh -huh. And told Jesus, you ought to come quick. Uh -huh. Because our brother is dead. Amen. Uh -huh. But the Bible said that Jesus, he took his time. Uh -huh. He waited a little while. Uh -huh. Jesus uh -huh. didn't get up in a tizzy. Uh -huh. He didn't get up running. Uh -huh. He didn't get up in a panic. He didn't get up and read. He didn't get up all upset. But the scripture said that Jesus waited a little while before he went down to Mary Martha and Lazarus house. And when Jesus was coming, the story said from afar off, Martha took off running, ran all out of shoes, ran up to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you had not been here, our brother would not have died. You don't hear me. 
And Jesus said, all I want you to do is just show me where you laid him. If you show me where you laid him, everything will be all right. And if you show me where you laid him, you will see him again. Martha said, yeah, Lord, I know I'll see him again. But right now, he's been dead a long time. And he's still here in the grave. In other words, Martha was saying that it's too late now. He's taken in the grave. We had to wait for him. Everybody else is in the house with Mary. Because Mary crying. And everybody looking at Mary. They want to see how she mourned for her brother. All Jesus said, well, just show me where you laid him. And then the Bible said that Jesus grew in his spirit. I'm just trying to tell you that Jesus is a man of sorrow. He's going to with grief. And when Jesus realized that he had to call his best friend back from death to life, the Bible said that he groaned in his spirit. And the Bible said that Jesus wept. He wasn't crying for Lazarus' sake. He wasn't crying for Martha's sake. He wasn't crying. He was crying because all of the people that were standing around, didn't believe that you were God, you don't hear me, and so Jesus just looked in the direction and called Lazarus by name, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, and the scripture said that Lazarus came up out of the grave, with red clothes on, bound up, but Lazarus was walking, you don't hear me, Jesus said, loose him, and let him go. Yeah. You know what I thought about that story? That always gets next to me. And Jesus cried because he realized he had a lot of unbelievers standing by. He also cried because Lazarus had to die all over again. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. But there's so many people that do not recognize the authority of Jesus. Then he stopped by on this Sunday morning and help you realize the power of Jesus. Help you realize the authority of Jesus. Jesus, Mary's baby, woke you up this morning. Jesus, Mary's baby, started you on your way. Jesus, Mary's baby, made it made possible for you to have eyes to see this morning. Jesus, Mary's baby, made it possible for you to put one foot in front of the other foot. I'm just trying to help you. Jesus, Mary's baby, made it possible for you to breathe in and breathe out. All I'm trying to tell you is you need some proof of who Jesus is. It is the Lord's blessing that we enjoy right now. It is the Lord's sunshine that we enjoy right now. Right it's the Lord's heaven that we're enjoying right now. I just stop by to tell you that it's impossible. To, you got to get in to the family of God. And every once in a while, you ought to take inventory. Every once in a while, you ought to ask the question, who is my brother? Every once in a while, you ought to ask the question, who is my sister? Every once in a while, you ought to ask the question, who is my mother? I got to leave you alone here, but there are still those who do not and who cannot relate to him. But the writer of Galatians said, by Jesus, all things are held together. By him, all things were made. And without him, nothing made that was made. And still, there's 
some people that do not understand their relationship with God. And then not only that, but there's some more evidence. Anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here this morning that know about a heal? A heal from Calvary. I got to leave you alone. But somebody needs some more evidence. Somebody needs some more proof before they will come into the family. So I don't want to heal. Call Calvary. The Bible said that Jesus God's only son come bled, suffered and died out on Calvary. I got to leave you alone. He didn't die for any sin that he had committed. He didn't die for anything that he had done. But he died for all humanity. He died for the new baby. He died for the older person. He died for the teenager. He died for the ones that's in the twenties. He died for all humanity. Is there anybody here that believe he died? If you believe he died, can somebody say yeah? Can somebody say yeah? Yes, I believe he died. Yes, I believe they took him down. I wasn't there in the physical body, but I was right there in the spiritual body. And so they took him down and laid him in Joseph new tomb three days and three nights. But according to the scripture, do you know God raised him from the dead? When he raised him from the dead, he got up with all power and heaven and earth. Why did God get him up? He did what the Father sent him to do. He did the will of the Father. I want you to go out and give your life a ransom for all humanity. You need to go all the way down. Don't stop nowhere. Go all the way down. I'm trying to leave you alone. You went all the way down. You didn't stop. Forty and two generations yeah. Yeah. went all the way down. Born of a virgin yeah. in Bethlehem, yeah. laying in a manger, yeah. wrapped in swaddling clothes, yeah. doing the will of my father. Yeah. I need you to die. I need you to die. Can you go down and die? We can die. I didn't need you to die, bleed and die, suffer and die for the sin of all the world. Don't worry about dying. Don't worry about where you're going to be buried. All you got to do is give your life and die. And he died. Surely he died. The Bible said that they laid him in a rich man too for three days. Yeah. He got up with all power, yeah. heaven in his hand. He was doing the will of the Father. I don't want you to come back to heaven right now. Take 40 days, yeah. if you please, and go down and be singing on me. I need the disciples. I need them to see you so they know that they're in the family. And then I got two men that just left Jerusalem. Well, they on their mail road. They're walking to a mess. I need you to stop and just have a little talk yeah. with them on the mail road. You don't hear me. Don't come back to heaven now. But just stay home for about 40 days. The Bible said that Jesus caught them out on the cloud and went on back to glory. The glory, y'all don't hear me yet. I believe I'll preach today like I've never preached before. But when you got back to heaven, I don't understand why you can't praise him. You got to praise him for all that he did. When the Bible said that when Jesus got back to heaven, heaven broke out of praise. I got to leave you alone. 
Start singing songs. Heaven, start dancing. Heaven, look at it on praise. Because Jesus had put all the way down. And he had what God told him to do. And came back to the Father. And when Jesus came back home, he didn't want God to get up and give him his seat. The Bible said that Jesus sat down. And given him a name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, everybody will be saved. At the name of Jesus, everybody will bow. And everybody will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. I'm trying to leave you alone, but I stopped by to tell you there's no other name given among men whereby men will be saved yeah. other than the name, the name of Jesus. Jesus is the only name that'll save your soul. Jesus is the only name that can put me and put you in the family. Can I get a witness here? I just stopped by to tell somebody that I love to call his name. His name suits my sorrow. His name wipes tears from my eyes. His name will lift your spirit. His name will enable you to go just a little bit further. His name will give you strength. His name will take care of your enemy. His name will put running in your feet. His name will put money in your pocket. I'm just trying to tell you what a wonderful name. And the name of Jesus. Yeah. Are you in the family yet? Are you in the family yet? If you're not in the family, I'm about to tell you, you better make up your mind to get in the family. Huh? The Lord is calling us home. Huh? Don't leave here without being in the family. Huh? That's the family you want to be in. That, that's who you want to be related to. Huh? That's who you want to be able to be. You want to brag about somebody? That's who you all want to brag about. I got five brothers. Y'all hear me? Jesus bad in all of them. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you. Why, why, Pastor? Because they're all in their place. Mm -hmm. they're, five, they're, they're five brothers. They're in the place of biological brothers on this earth. Yeah. But I got an elder brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got an elder brother. You see, sometimes when I call my elder brother, I can't get him on the phone. Uh -huh. huh? But when I call my elder brother, yeah. The line is never been. Yeah. Huh? My little brother, he come, man, did you call me? I was doing this, I was doing that. But when I call Jesus, yeah. he's never too busy. Yeah. Huh? And we don't get loud. What you want? <laughs> no, he, he doesn't do that. Amen? Sometimes he just listens. Yeah. He says, hello, I'm here. He just listens. Mm -hmm. Softly and quietly. Huh? That's the kind of Relative, you need to have. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You ever had any family fights? Mm. We used to have family fights when I was a, a, a boy, a young kid. Mm. Huh? And it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. I told my oldest brother one time, when I'm done, I told him one time, you better hope. I can sleep before you do. That's what you better hope. Because that's the only thing going to save you tonight. <laughs> the Lord fixed it. So that I went to sleep before he did. <laughs> it had got out of my mother's hand. She couldn't have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about family fight now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, at our age now, we laugh about all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, it was really nothing but trivial stuff. Yeah. It, was yeah. just, it was just family mess. Yeah. That's all it yeah. was. But as you grow, you begin to realize 
That's not what God wants. He, he wants you to live together. He wants you to respect each other. I'm the second oldest. But everybody grown. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I got three sisters. I can't tell none of them how to spend their money. Uh. I can't tell none of them what kind of car to buy. Uh -huh. They're all grown. Uh -huh. And most of the time, I don't talk about things like that unless they ask me. Uh. Because they're grown. Yeah. I got to respect that. Mm -hmm. hmm? We're on a different level. We all respect each other. They have children, I got children. We're grown. Our children are grown. Yeah, yeah. Have respect each other. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, somebody. Else. <laughs> now, I'm still, I'm still the second oldest. Uh -huh. Oldest brother, he's still oldest brother. Mm -hmm. But he don't want nothing. All right. All right. Talk to me in here. Yeah. Yeah. No, he don't want nothing. If he, if he want to try to want something, he called me and asked me for my opinion. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he always tell people, I'm the oldest. <laughs> The door of the church is open for the receptive members. Will you stand to the feet? To your feet, choir gives us a selection. I hope you got something.